Hello friends, it's Christy Marcotte. Queen & Company just released their Christmas Shaker Kit. This is called the North Pole Kit and it's absolutely adorable. And this is a big kit. There are 25 steel dies. There's enough foam and acetate pieces to make 21 shaker cards, lots of exclusive shaker toppings, and also a full six by six paper pad. Whenever Queen & Company's kits include a six by six paper pad, I decide to finish off that paper completely and see how many cards I can create. And for the first time, Queen & Company has also offered a solid six by six paper pad. So this is the North Pole Party Solids. And this is not cardstock, it's the same paper as their pattern paper, but all of the colors coordinate perfectly with this North Pole Party pattern paper. So I decided I'm gonna try to use that along with some coordinating cardstock. Now, even though I'm going to be using up the entire six by six paper pad, I'm not gonna show the full process. So I'll show the making of one card, but I'll probably make at least two or three of each of these different designs. And I'll show all of those at the end of each of these card sketches. So for this first card, I'm using Mojo Monday sketch number 527. I am a huge fan of using card sketches for inspiration. Sometimes I follow them exactly, and then other times I just use them as a starting point and then alter them along the way. For this first card, I use some of that solid paper for the background and also that square that's gonna go behind the image. I'm starting out by stamping a sentiment. I wanna make sure I had a good impression, so I did use my Mini Misty, and I love this sentiment so much. It's all fun and games until Santa checks the naughty list. I think that's gonna be a great card. I use some of this polka dot paper for that rectangle strip. And then I'm gonna add some of Queen & Company's Trio Trims, just wrapping it around the middle of the card twice, and then I'll adhere it to the back using some of their red line tape. I will be using a huge variety of products in this video, but probably 90% of them are all from Queen & Company. So if you are interested, I will have links in the description box for all of those products used. So I've gone ahead and attached my card front onto a card base and I did leave just that eighth of an inch of the card base showing. Then I just tied a bow on the left hand side and next I'm gonna attach this square, although it's gonna be more of a diamond shape since it's gonna be crooked. And I am gonna pop that up using some foam dimensional tape and I'm just putting two strips above and below the twine. Since that twine has a little bit of thickness to it, I don't want to add any extra bumps on this little square. So then I'm also putting some extra foam on the top and bottom corners, and I just wanted to make sure I wasn't overlapping any pieces. So for this card, I'm gonna make the Santa hat. And I do have the outline dies along with the regular dies that are included in the kit. And the outline dies are so handy because you can easily just cut out that piece behind the shaker card. So if I didn't have the outline die, you could use the frame die and then insert the inside part. But sometimes there's that little bit of a gap. So using the outline dies, it takes that part away. So I filled up that shaker using different toppings that are all included in the kit. Attached my acetate, then just used some liquid adhesive to glue the little frame on top. And then I like to use my acrylic block just to weight it down while the glue dries. And then just to add the extra pieces onto Santa's hat, the little fluff and the little pom-pom, I used some Lawn Fawn glitter paper. Thought it added a lovely little sparkle. And then just a few finishing touches. I have this obsession of putting little banners in the upper corners of my cards. So I cut out two of them using Queen & Company's foundation dies. This is one of their stitched sentiment banners. And I just cut two different sizes using the cardstock that I have for layering. And then attach those in that upper left-hand corner. And now I'll just use an assortment of Queen & Company bling to finish off my card. 
I absolutely love these colors. It's fun to have some traditional Christmas colors and then also some non-traditional colors in the same paper pad. So there is my finished card and I did make two. So moving on to the next card, I'll go ahead and start off by stamping my sentiment using my mini Misty again. And this is Santa Claus is coming to town. And this pattern paper has a really light gray coloring to it and it looks like snow falling. And I'm just layering that on some green, red and white striped paper. And I decided not to have a matted layer of cardstock on this card. I liked the stripes on the outside. And now I used some more of this glitter paper and then also some of Queen & Company's border dies to create a couple of hills. So I'm going to have a little scene here. I have two of the trees and this is using the outline die. So I'm going to have one of them way in the background. And then I'll have my extra little hillside on top and then I'll be able to attach that second tree. And since it is going on top of this glitter paper, which has a little bit of dimension, I use some thin foam squares just on the upper portion of the tree. And then it also adds a little more dimension to the scene. Use a little bit of liquid adhesive to attach the trunk to that tree. And now I pulled out the North Pole shaker sign. So first I cut out the background using one of the outline dies. I'll just adhere that to the card using some liquid adhesive. And now I'll start creating the shaker. So I pulled off the one sticky side, a little backing on the foam piece, and I'll fill it up with a variety of different shaker toppings. It's always fun. Their new kits include really cute and unique shaker toppings. And you can always buy refills for their kits. So it's nice to have an extra paper pad, some extra foam, and then definitely some more of those shaker toppings. So now I'm going to finish off that little North Pole sign using some more of the dies. I cut the post using some more brown paper and then I have just a little bit of silver foil paper for the little top part of the post. Not sure if it would really be a little metal topping, but I thought it looked pretty. Use some red paper for the North Pole sign. And then just finishing off the card, I decided to add a few snowflakes using some more of that silver foil paper. And these snowflakes are from Queen & Company's special delivery kit. And now pulling out some of the bling, I have a nice assortment again, a few of the stars, some petite posies, and then also some jelly gems. I put little petite posies in the center of those snowflakes and I decided that tree in the front needed some lights. So I'm just using some of the green jelly gems randomly on that tree. And then I'll sprinkle just a few more of those jelly gems around the card. I love how this one turned out. Such a pretty scene with some glittery snow. And I did make two of the same card. So now moving on to the next card design. I'm using a sketch from Queen & Company and I love this sketch. Queen & Company sketches were designed to coordinate with their foundation dies. They currently sell five different foundation die sets. I love every single one and use them all the time. You can definitely still use this sketch without the foundation dies, but it does make it super quick and easy. For the background paper, I use this beautiful a striped paper and then I'm just using a tone on tone gray paper with looks like snowflakes in the background for that middle piece. Layered that in some gray. It's not cardstock. This is actually from their solid pack. Go ahead and layer all of this on some of this turquoise or teal cardstock. Had to trim off just a little bit because it was a little too long put my card front onto a card base and I did use one of Queen & Company's border dies to cut out that fun little zigzag piece at the bottom of my card. Now for this card I'm going to be assembling Rudolph. So I love this little reindeer that's included in the kit. I started off by cutting out the outline die and then attaching the foam and I'm going to put the little toppings inside. I have some of their little square princess cut toppings, some diamonds, and then also these little white snowflakes. 
remove the other backing so I can attach my acetate. Then I'll use my liquid adhesive to attach the little frame. And I could attach all of this or assemble all of it directly onto the card, but I thought I'd do it separately this time. One of the nicer things about using the outline dies. So little Rudolph has several uh, different die pieces to assemble him. So it has the little eyes, a little inside piece for the ears, the little antlers, and then of course the nose. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started on the nose and I decided I'm going to use some of Queen and Company's foil. So first I have a piece of white cardstock. I used some of their Gloober sheet, which is basically just a large sheet of red line tape to remove that clear backing off of the gloober sheet, I use a piece of scotch tape and it peels it up perfectly. So I have some of the red glitter foil. Easiest foil ever to use, you don't need to heat set it, it basically just adheres to anything sticky. So I just pressed it onto that exposed gloober, ran it through my die cut machine to cut out Rudolph's nose. So now it has a beautiful little shiny kind of sparkly nose. And I used some liquid adhesive to attach Rudolph's head to the card. And now I'm just attaching the antlers. Isn't that just adorable? I love this little Rudolph. So now for the sentiment, I already went ahead and stamped it out, used one of Queen and Company's stitched banner dies. So this is Christmas wishes from our home to yours. And I layer that in some more of this cardstock and I'm just gonna pop it up using some foam dimensional tape. Now Queen and Company's cards are very thick, especially if you're using or making shaker cards. If you are wanting to mail these cards to someone else, they will require some additional postage. I tend to personally just hand out my cards whenever I have the shaker card or I include them inside a package if I'm going to be mailing them. Just to play it safe because you don't want them getting crushed in the postal machines. Now to finish off the card, I pulled out another assortment of Queen & Company bling. They sell so many different styles, sometimes it's hard to figure out which ones I want to use on my card. But there is my finished card and I did make two using this sketch. Now moving on to the next card design. I won't be using a card sketch this time. I don't for all of my cards. They're nice to have, but with Queen & Company's foundation dies, you can easily assemble a card just using some of the different pieces. So I have a tone-on-tone -tone red paper for the background, cut out this stitched rectangle, and then also this stitched banner, going with those non-traditional Christmas colors again. I'm gonna add some of Queen & Company's trio trims. This is the red and white twine. Just wrapping two layers around the top of the card. And I'll adhere the ends on the back side using some red line tape. And then I'll put another piece of red line tape just on that top portion, just to make sure it doesn't sort of pull away from the card base. Lots of adhesive. I always wanna make sure my cards stay put together. I'll attach it to a card base, and then I'll tie a bow in that upper right-hand corner. Next, I cut out a stitched circle die cut using some of this gray paper. And a lot of the solid papers that you're seeing on my set of cards is from that North Pole Party Solids. I wasn't sure how much I would really enjoy that solid 6x6 paper pad, but I used it quite a bit, so it was very handy to pick up to go along with the kit. So I'm making a little gingerbread house, so I decided it needed a lot of different toppings. Just sticking with the same colors to go with the paper. Got it all sealed in place with the acetate, and now I can adhere all of those other little pieces, starting with the little frame. And I did use an outline die for that background. And then this is really fun. It has little snow pieces. So it has some that you can put on the, the roof and then also at the top of the chimney. And I did cut it out using some white glitter paper. 
And then there's a couple candy canes. Well, it's actually only one candy cane die, so you do have to cut out one in reverse. At least if you want them to go the opposite direction. So I've got my little house all assembled. Isn't that adorable? Had a little bit of glue on the edge, so I just wiped that away. And now I can just use some liquid adhesive to attach my gingerbread house to my card. So you don't really see a whole lot of that circle, but it still kind of anchors the house onto the card and adds a little bit of separation from that busier polka dot paper. So I'll go ahead and attach a sentiment. And I did already stamp this. I used another one of Queen and Company's foundation dies. This is one of their stitched sentiment die cuts. Layered that in some more of this red cardstock and then just popped it up using some more foam dimensional tape. And now I'll pull out a nice assortment of bling. Just gonna use a few different types, some of them around that lower corner and then a few around the upper corner of the card. Put a small little pearl on the wreath on the little house. And I don't always show this step, but I do like to add just that little scrap of pattern paper on the inside of the card, just for a little extra detail. Then I was showing my second card and I realized I forgot to add these little peppermints to the top of my little gingerbread house. So this is one of the toppings that's included in the kits and I just thought they looked super sweet in the frosting on the roof of the house. So I'll just attach those and there is my finished card and there are two of the same design. Now moving on to my next set of cards. I'm using a sketch from Queen and Company. I tell you the number, but these actually aren't numbered. I do have a link in the description box below if you wanna go and check out all of their sketches. They're so much fun. I like to use them in my regular six by six videos as well. For this card, I'm using polka dot paper for the background. I have it layered on some of this teal card stock. And I did cut out that scalloped square out of that background matted layer just to save on paper. Always helpful, especially if you're really low on a specific color. And I didn't have a lot of this teal color. Then I used another one of the foundation dies to cut that strip, that turquoise strip going across the card. And then also under one of Queen and Company's border dies for that little scallop piece in red. And for this card, I'm going to be assembling the bell. So I used that outline die for this background piece of the bell. I cut it out using some specialty satin red paper. I thought it was really pretty. I'm going to fill up that bell using an assortment of toppings. A couple from the kit, and then I also included some of the clear diamonds. I get that all sealed in place using the acetate. And then for the frame of the bell, I'm using some of Queen & Company's glitter foam. This foam is super easy to use since it's self-adhesive. And now I'm going to assemble this darling double bow that's included in the kit. So there's two different dies. And I'm using some eighth of an inch score tape. I just find it a little easier to hold all of these little bows in place, these little pieces, because I think liquid glue would be a little messy. So I just cut a small piece of score tape, fold over one part of the bow, and then cut another piece of the score tape. And I just keep folding all of those pieces until I get my bow assembled. There's the one piece that wraps around the middle, kind of the tie of the bow, and then there's that little background piece. Then I'll just use some liquid adhesive to attach it to the top of my bell. Hold that in place with an acrylic block. And then once again, I did already stamp the sentiment. I don't for the whole video, but I was just trying to save on time. Layered that using some more of that same cardstock. Pop it up using some foam dimensional tape. And then I have an assortment of dies that I used. I have a couple of stars. These are all stitched and they are from Queen and Company, some more of their foundation die sets. I'm gonna do my two little banners in that upper left-hand corner. And these are like the longer sentiment strips. I just cut off the very ends so I can have the length that I want. And then I'm going to use some really thin foam dimensional squares underneath these stars. 
And then I'm just going to add an assortment of bling around the cardigan. I love all of this bling. Put a few of them in the center of the stars. And then just randomly around the sentiment and then the image, a few of them on those banners. It almost has a patriotic look to it because it looks so red, white, and blue to me. You don't really see much of the gray. So there is my finished card, and I did make two using this sketch. And isn't that bow so beautiful? It's definitely worth that extra work to assemble. So now moving on to my next card. This is a sketch from MFT. It's number 268. One thing that I really like about Queen and Company's paper pads is even when they are a holiday specific paper design, there's usually only one pattern that is very holiday specific. So here is that one sheet that's in the whole paper pad. I mean, there's a few that are a little wintry, but this is the only one that's very holiday looking. So I'm going to use that on the top portion of this sketch. And then I'm using some score tape and then also some red line tape. I wanted two different widths and I don't have any red line tape in the eighth of an inch. So now I'm going to add some more of Queen & Company's foil. Like I said, this is so easy to use. You just need something uh, sticky. Once I remove the backing on the score tape and the red light tape, I just press the foil on top and then peel away the backing of the foil. And there you go. So simple to use. I just thought it would look really pretty as a little border on this card. So this is, uh, I think it's a crushed diamond green. It comes in Queen & Company's holiday foil pack. So before I do any more assembling on the card, I forgot I wanted to add a sentiment. And I was kind of holding my breath that that was going to stamp nicely because I didn't pull out my Misty this time, but it stamped just fine. So for this card, I'm going to be assembling the tree. So I'll start off with the outline die. And I just use some of that solid green paper. Attach the little trunk to the tree. And then I can pop out the inside piece of the foam. And I do save those foam pieces. They work great to add foil to or even just for some extra dimensional adhesive. I'm going to fill that tree with an assortment of toppings, all in red, green, and white. And then I'll remove the top backing on the foam. I had a few pieces that wanted to jump out. And then some of those snowflakes like to kind of stick to that acetate so they start to stand on end and then it adds a little bit of a bump. So I was just flattening those in there before I attached the acetate. I'll let that all hold in place with my acrylic block while I assemble another bow. So same process again. I just put a small piece of score tape, fold over one side of the bow, add another piece of score tape wrap that middle all around and I feel like you can have two different looks with this bow. There's the front and the back and I, I like both of them. So I did alternate a few different times on my cards during this video of which side I liked more. So go ahead and attach the bow onto that little backing piece. Try to fluff it up a little bit and then this time I'm going to use some glue dots to adhere it to the top of the tree. I love this big giant bow on the top of a Christmas tree. So pretty. I'll just add a red banner in that upper right hand corner of the card. I really just like the look and sometimes I feel like those upper corners are empty if I don't put something there. So just have some random bling and put one in the center of the bow. I like to put some bling on those banners in the upper, upper corner. And I love the rounded corner look of this card, just for something a little different. And I did remember to round the corners on that little strip of pattern paper on the inside of the card as well. So I made two cards using this sketch. Now moving on to my next set of cards. This sketch is by Sweet Sunday. It's number 231. So I'm going to use some more traditional Christmas colors. I just have some white pearlescent paper for the background and then this really fun striped paper going across the middle. I'm going to layer all of that on some red cardstock. 
And then before I get any further, I'm going to put that card front onto a card base. And then I have three different pattern papers that I'm cutting out a little fishtail on the end. And I have two of, that are tone on tone and then one with a polka dot design. And the way these three banner strips are on the sketch, they're kind of layered on top of each other and one of them's in the middle. So I put the tone on tone designs on the outside and then that polka dot paper in the middle. And then before I adhere that to the card, I did put just a small strip of the red cardstock on the, the upper and lower portion, just because there's that dimension from the strip going across the middle and I didn't want the top and lower portion to sort of sag on the card. So then I used some of Queen & Company's glitter foam for the scallop circle and then some more pearlescent paper for that stitched circle die cut. And I will be assembling a wreath this time. So I used the green paper for, with the outline die for that background of the wreath. Now one thing to mention about this wreath, it doesn't cut out the center. So I just have a small a circle a die cut with some white paper and I just made sure it was smaller than this inside portion of the wreath, that little foam piece, that way it wouldn't show around the edge. So I glued that in place and now it looks like that hole was already there for the wreath. So now I'll just use an assortment of different toppings, sprinkling them all around the wreath. I'm sure once it stands up, they'll actually all fall to the bottom, but this is a good way to kind of gauge how much toppings to put in there. So I went ahead and attached the acetate and then forgot that I wanted to stamp a sentiment and my block was not going to work because it was going to go on top of that foam piece. So I did have to go and move the sentiment and then stamp it. And luckily it just stamped fine again, really taking a chance meant to do that at the beginning. So I'll go ahead and attach the two little frame pieces to the wreath, let those dry for a moment. And I did assemble another bow, but I decided to cut out that portion since you've already watched me assemble it twice. And it does take a little bit of time. And this video is already about 50 minutes long. So I just put some red line tape on the back of the bow. I'm using an assortment of different adhesives to attach my bows, just trying out which things work better. And so far they all seem to work just fine have my assortment of bling all in those traditional Christmas colors. I really love how this one turned out and you can tell I like this bow because this is the third card in a row that I've used that bow. So there are the two cards using this sketch. Now moving on to my next set of cards. I'm using another sketch from Queen and & Company and I have this striped paper cut out a little reindeer head out of the background because the opposite side of this paper is the brown design. So it's kind of perfect. I could get the image along with that paper and it's all covered up so nobody's going to know that piece is missing. So I'm going to use some more of Queen & Company's twine, putting some of the red and white on the top portion of the card, wrapped it around the card three times. To make sure it's straight before I attach it with some red line tape on the back side. And this card is all going to be just red, white, and then there's a light gray. And then of course the brown for Rudolph. So I'm going to put my card front onto a card base. And when most of the background of my card is white, I prefer not to leave that eighth of an inch border of the card base showing because I feel like it's just too much white. So I know some people have asked me how I determine whether I use that border or not, and that's usually one of the main reasons. Also, if there's, there isn't any white in the paper, if it's more of a cream or something, I don't want to have that white border showing. So I just use some of that red cardstock for that strip going on the lower portion of the card, and then use some of that gray pattern paper with the little snowfall for the sentiment. This is Christmas wishes from our home to yours. And now I'm going to assemble Rudolph again. So I started off with the outline die, attach the foam, and then I'm gonna attach the antlers first because I think it's a little easier to do before you start assembling the rest of the card. Got my assortment of toppings. 
And then a few of those little squares kept jumping out. So you'll see a couple of them on the sides, which I don't notice them right away. Then I'll get them all sealed in place with that acetate. I love all these little white snowflakes. They look cute even inside of Rudolph's head. I'll go ahead and glue on the frame and then also the rest of the pieces to assemble Rudolph's little face. Or the little inside of the ears, the eyes, and then this time for Rudolph's nose, I used Queen & Company's Glitter Foam. So this is self-adhesive, so I just have to peel off that back and then attach it right onto the card. Super easy, and it still has that beautiful sparkle. So I'm gonna pull out some more of the bling, and I decided to use some of the hearts this time. I thought it just worked really nicely with that sentiment. And then also just some of the jelly gems. Kept it fairly simple this time. Now the kit includes three foam and acetate pieces for each of the images, but you can still use the dies to make adorable cards, even if they aren't shaker cards. So the second card I assembled, I did not make a shaker card, but it's still super sweet. Now moving on to the next card. This is another Queen and Company sketch. I'm going to use this polka dot paper for the background, layering it on some red cardstock. And then I have two different banners using some of the pattern paper. And all of these dies are one of Queen & Company's foundation die sets. I don't remember which one goes with which anymore. There are five different sets. I use all of them probably equally. Maybe the sentiment strips a little bit more than the others. So I have this hexagon cut it out using some white pearlescent cardstock, and then I'm just going to layer it on some red cardstock. And this is really easy to layer because you can just take a pair of scissors and just snip each of those six sides. So it's going to adhere it to the card, and I decided I wanted to pop it up first. So I'm just adding some foam dimensional tape, getting good coverage so there isn't one side that sags at all. Go ahead and adhere that to the card front. Put my card front onto a card base before I add any images. So I've already gone ahead and stamped the sentiment, and this is so funny. Friends don't give friends fruitcake. Isn't that cute? Attach that to the bottom of the card, and then I'm going to use the Santa hat. I use some glitter foam and then some more of that glitter paper. And then I have the reindeer head, but I'm going to cut off the ears. So I know this looks a little strange, but you'll see where I'm going here in just a moment. So now I'm going to take those ears and put it behind the head and it's going to wear a little hat. So I'm making a little elf. As soon as I saw the ears on Rudolph's head, I'm like, oh, those would work for an elf ear as well. So I just had to change the placement and it was so easy to do. So now I'm just gluing the rest of the head in place. Try to make sure I have the hat in the correct position before I can attach the little fluff. And I'm putting a piece of foam dimensional tape underneath that top portion of the hat because it was drooping off of that hexagon. And then I'll also put a small piece of foam tape on the lower portion of the little fluff on the hat. Otherwise, it would have been sagging down too low on that lower portion. And then I'll use just a little bit of liquid adhesive where it's going to be attached to that glitter foam. I find that the only thing that really holds anything on a glitter paper or foam is liquid adhesive. So I'm putting the little pom-pom and I notice that right hand side it's also just drooping off. So I have a small piece of the foam. This was on the inside of one of the wreath pieces and I'm just putting it on that right hand side of the little pom-pom. And add a little more liquid adhesive since I kind of pulled it up when I removed that piece. So I got everything nice and even on the card. So I'm just going to add some little eyes for my little elf. And I thought about doing a little mouth, but I think it's just fine with just the eyes. I think this elf turned out so cute. It's always fun to use the dies in the kit for something else. I know in Queen & Company's Hocus Pocus kit, there's some witch shoes and somebody used them to make little elf shoes. So that's super cute and it would go really nicely with this little elf head. 
So I'm just finishing off the card using another assortment of Queen and Company's bling. I think one of my favorite blings for this kit are the little lollies. So I did only make one card using this sketch because at this point I don't have a whole lot of pattern paper left. So now moving on to the next card design. This is another Queen and Company sketch. The background paper is that gray paper with a little bit of snowfall. And I used one of Queen and Company's border dies for that curved scalloped border at the bottom. I thought that was really pretty and it has that nice faux stitching. Almost looks more like a lace. So I layered those papers on some red cardstock and I'm gonna be using the bell. So I have the outline die and then there is the frame die and I'm gonna use some more of Queen and Company's foil. So first I'm going to cut out some cardstock in the right size for the bells because I'm gonna need three different pieces. So then I have some of Queen & Company's Gloober Sheets and then I'm gonna cut a similar size piece for each of those cardstocks. So I have one more. So they don't need to be perfect, it just needs to be big enough to fit that die, the little bell die. So I take off the paper backing on that Gloober Sheet first, just adhere it onto the cardstock. One more piece. And then I'm going to pull out my scotch tape and then also some of the foil. And this is, it looks a little yellow. It's kind of a gold glitter color. So I use that scotch tape to peel off the backing. And then it just peels right off. And then I accidentally dropped the other side of my foil onto that exposed gloober adhesive. So I ruined that first piece. No big deal. I'll just do another piece. But here I'll go ahead and I'll finish up those other three. And you can see this foil is only about an inch wide, so it's not wide enough to cover the bell. But all you have to do is put one strip next to the other, kind of overlap them slightly. And you really don't see much of that little bit of a seam. And if there's any little spots where the adhesive doesn't attach, you can just take the leftover parts of the foil and then just push it back down on any little pieces it didn't take. So here's that third piece that I have to redo because I dropped my foil. So be very careful, that foil is very thin and if you drop it onto anything adhesive, it'll stick. So here's my final piece. I'm being really, really careful and not to drop it again. And this has a little bit of an iridescent look. So you can tell from my lights, it almost looks a little bit of green, a little bit of blue, very rainbow looking. But in real life, it looks more yellow. I think it's just the way my lights are hitting it. So after I have all of my foil attached onto those gloober sheets, then I can just run the die on top of those pieces and cut out all of these bell shapes. So I have two of the outline dies. I'm gonna attach one first, and then the second bell is going to be a shaker. So I also have the frame to go along with that outline. Go ahead and stamp a sentiment on some gray paper. I didn't like the first one, it was a little uneven, so I did stamp a second one. I did trim off just that left-hand side, since you're not going to see it, it's gonna go underneath this bell. So I'll use some liquid adhesive to ad adhere that bell. And the right-hand side of the bell is kind of drooping down, simply because that other bell has a little bit of dimension. So I just put a small piece of cardstock underneath just to even it up. I'm gonna go ahead and put my foam piece onto that right bell. I'll put some toppings in there. I have some of the yellow square, and then I have some yellow diamonds, and then also some of the white snowflakes. I'm going to seal all of those in place with some acetate and then adhere the little foil frame bell on top. And I will hold that in place for a little while using my acrylic block. And now I'm going to do these little banners that are in that upper right hand corner. So I cut them out using the red cardstock and then also some of this light gray paper. So I try to lay them out to get the placement correct, and then I'm just overlapping them slightly. Still trying to get them nice and even. I do kind of fuss with that little right-hand side one. 
And then I assembled a white bow to put on top of my bell. I used some white pearlescent paper that had a really pretty shine to it. I'm just going to use some of Queen Company's bling. I'm putting one of the yellow petite posies in between each of those little banner flags. Kind of covers up any little gaps and it goes nicely with the yellow foil. I'll just use some other bling around the card. Not too many because the bell kind of has enough on its own. And I did make two cards using this sketch, although the second card I made a white wreath out of glitter paper. And then I also used some different papers for the background. But I love how both of them turned out. So beautiful. So here is all of the pattern paper I have left over. It's not a lot and I don't have any full pieces at all. For this card, I'm not going to use a sketch, but I have three different pattern papers that coordinate nicely together. And I'm using two different border dies by Queen & Company. This is their On Point border die set. The background paper is some white pearlescent paper and I used a stitched rectangle die, so I have that nice faux stitching. And I used that same die to get the faux stitching on the sides of each of these pattern papers. And then I cut out all of them using a different border die. Well, I have two different border dies that I used. And I'm just going to layer them on top of each other, alternating between the scalloped and then that straight edge. So I had that full sheet of the white paper for the background, and then I did trim off about an inch and a half of it for the bottom. And now for the rest of that piece, I'm going to use another one of the border dies. Just going to use the straight line this time. And to make sure I had that point centered, I just lined up the paper on my craft mat since it's one inch grids and that piece is four inches wide. Made it really easy to get it nice and straight. So I have all of those pieces layered. I love having that little variety of different pattern papers together. Then I use that background cardstock for that scallop circle. And now I'm going to assemble a little gingerbread house. And this is not going to be a shaker this time. Just showing how easy and cute it is to still use those dies even when you're out of the foam pieces. Now, of course, you can always purchase refills, but the dies work on their own as well. So even though this is not going to be a shaker card, I still use that outline die and then also the frame. It adds just a slight bit of dimension and interest. And I personally really like the look. So I'm just going to assemble all of this little gingerbread house. I have the candy canes and the door. Got my little wreath. And then this time for the snow, I used Queen & Company's white glitter foam, just to add a little more dimension. And it's so easy because this is self-adhesive, so I can just pull off the backing and attach it to my card. And now for the sentiment, I stamped Merriest of Holidays, just on a white stitched sentiment strip. And I decided not to layer it in any of that blue. I think it still stood out just fine, and I really wanted the gingerbread house to be the main focus of the card anyway. I cut out a couple of small banners for that upper right hand corner using some of the solid paper. I have a lighter blue and then a gray. I'm pulling out the bling. Got some more of those lollies. I think the red really is pretty with this card. I add a little piece of bling, a little jelly gem for the handle on the door. And then a red one for the, kind of like the bow on the wreath. I also made a similar card using the traditional Christmas colors, and that gingerbread house is a shaker card. That was my third shaker foam piece for the gingerbread house. Now moving on to my next card design. This is another Queen & Company sketch. And for this card, this is the last long strip of pattern paper that I have left over. So I will only be making one card with this sketch. This is a super quick and easy card. Use some white pearlescent paper for the top portion of the card. Have that striped pattern paper on the bottom. Just have some green paper for that strip going across the lower portion of the card. Then using two different pattern papers and then this square with the rounded corners. This is one of the foundation dies. I cut out those four squares and I'm just alternating the colors. 
we'll try to get them nice and even on the card. Always helps to lay them out first and then start adhering them in place. I cut out an oval die cut and then also a scalloped oval die cut. Stamped the sentiment, tis the season to be jolly. Just gonna pop that up using some foam dimensional tape. And I'm following this sketch exactly. So this isn't, I'm not altering it at all. And then I'll put my card front onto a card base. And then just finish off the card with just a little bit of bling. I'm not gonna go over the top. This is a very simple and quick card. Just gonna put a few in the upper and lower corner of the card. And there is my finished card. If I had had one more long strip, I probably would have done at least two cards with that sketch. So now moving on to the final sketch. This is another Queen and Company sketch. Just gonna use some solid green paper for the background, layering that in a darker green cardstock. I'm gonna start off by stamping the sentiment. I'll make sure to get a good impression, so I did use my Mini Misty. And then using all of the squares or the little scraps of paper, I cut out some more of these rounded corner squares. So I'm gonna put eight of them on the card and I'm just trying to lay them out so they're, they look fairly random. I don't want two of the same pieces next to each other. And then I'll start adhering them onto the card. I usually start on the top row, kind of work my way down. They don't have to be perfectly straight because that center part's gonna be covered up by this tag, but I do wanna get them as straight as possible. I'm still just eyeballing it. I never actually use a ruler or anything to actually get the measurements perfect. So I'll go ahead and attach my card front onto a card base. And then I'm gonna use the more of Queen & Company's Trio Trims. This is a, a red and it has sort of an iridescent threading throughout it. So it has a really lovely sparkle. Just kind of looped it through the hole of the tag and then to make sure it's not going to come off, I just attached it using a small piece of score tape and then I'll pop up the whole thing using some foam dimensional squares. And now I'm gonna assemble Rudolph. Now this piece is actually the inside piece of the frame. So normally you would have that outline as well, but I thought it was still super cute and it made a little smaller image and it still works. It looks like a reindeer head. So I cut out all of the little die cut pieces so I can assemble him. Now the antler did get a little close to the hole of the tag. So I'm kind of tucking it over and a little bit of it's gonna actually go on top of the ear, but that still works out just fine. Last, put the eyes in place and I just used some red paper for the nose this time. And I'll just finish off the card using some more of Queen & Company's bling. So super simple and this is a great sketch to really finish off the last of those paper scraps from your 6x6 six six paper pad. So I actually made four cards using this sketch and that was basically all of the paper I had left over. It was kind of perfect that I was able to make two in the traditional Christmas colors and two in the non-traditional colors. So here is all of the pattern paper scraps that I have left over. And I'll be giving those to my daughter because she'll love to use them. And I do still have three of the foam and acetate pieces left over. And then since I used a lot of the solid six by six paper pad, this is what I have left over from that. It was great to have in addition to the kit. Now here's just a quick recap of the 26 cards I made using Queen & Company's North Pole kit along with their solids, six by six paper pad, and then also a little bit of coordinating cardstock. I ended up using three sheets of eight and a half by 11 and then eight sheets of 12 by 12 solid colored cardstock. This kit is so much fun. It is available now. If you are interested, I do have links in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.